without the context, uh, some of them can be a, a, little, a little strange. Do you have an example you're willing to share? Uh, she reaches back into her pocket and draws out uh, a folded up piece of paper. Uh, the piece that she was handed by one of the children not that long ago. And I'm going to share you a handout. Ooh, a handout. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god. Viewers. Okay. That's delightful. I love it. And she goes, That's the best handout I've ever seen in a Cthulhu game. I am goes, so into that. Hello, and welcome to the Stream of Chaos. Uh, my name is Dave, and I will be your Keeper of Arcane Lore for this session of Call of Cthulhu. Um, we are currently playing through the very recently released A Time to Harvest, and you can get your own copy of this campaign from chaosium.com. Uh, all of our previous sessions are available on the YouTube, where this one is destined in the near future. Um, and if you're enjoying the content there, be sure to like and leave us a comment letting, you know what you th letting us know what you think. Uh, if you'd like to watch the chaos unfold live, uh, we do stream each Friday at 4pm Pacific on the Chaosium Twitch channel. Um, I'd also like to thank Roll20 and um, Sirenscape for being great tools which we use to run Call of Cthulhu got it for a moment there um but without further ado let's jump into this week's session so over the last few uh days a storm has been slowly growing and by now uh it's set in heavy rain plummets from the sky and the sun is obscured be behind like dark dark gray clouds um our first investigator that we'll meet is seb uh, played by Art, who is currently in Cobb's Corners, having recently left a uh, Sunday service at the church. Art. Hi, I'm Art. Uh, I am playing Sebastian McCarthy. Uh, Seb to his friends. Dave, we are not friends. Just to be clear. It's Sebastian. Or McCarthy, if you're feeling particularly... Aggressive. Accurate. <laughs> okay. McCarthy to the people he's going to punch. Um... Or friend. Just, hello friend. Anyway, uh, Seb is um, dressed for church uh, because it is a Sunday morning and that is where he has just been. Um, has, I believe, specified from last time, like one of those funeral sized umbrellas. Oh, like yeah. It's black and it's large and so he's just like, very much looks like he is on his way to or from a funeral. Um, Seb is... I think kind of pretty nonchalant after everything that happened last, mm -hmm. like, at the end of last session. He's, he feels like he's got a bit of a, maybe a bit of an upper hand, which is probably very, well, it is a very unhealthy thing for the investigator to think they have an upper hand, uh, which is why we're rolling with it. Cause... I was saying it's a very cocky uh, outlook when you just had your, like, you know, the place you were sleeping at stormed by a murderous drunk who was then bludgeoned by one of your colleagues. Yeah, but the point is, he was bludgeoned by one of my colleagues, and therefore... Taking it in stride. Alright, well, very good. Uh, so, Seb in Cobb's Corners. Meanwhile, Katie and Chaz are still back at the McLearan farmhouse, and let's meet the bludger. That's you, Jackson. Great! <laughs> the bludger. He who bludgers. Yeah. That's Chaz. I'm Jackson, and I'm playing Chaz Dedrick, star of the football team. Uh, he's got a mean tackle, at least, uh, we saw uh, when he took down the, the murderous drunk who happened upon our farmhouse. And, uh, yeah, things are going from strength to strength. He's been dared not to do any work today, which has mm -hmm. gone very well so far, thanks to uh, Katie's plan of breaking into uh, places where they're not supposed to be. Uh, he's looking forward to seeing what unfolded. What unfolds, rather. So your previous strategy was to move between two groups, appearing yep. to do as much work as possible. You need to yep. now continue to appear to do as much work to the teachers while appearing to do as little work in the eyes of Katie and the other yep. students. Because truth or dare is sacred. You yeah, can't, that's right. <laughs> you, you can't mess with that. That seems simple. Well, best of luck to you. Uh, finally, I guess the dare uh, Katie. That's me, the Dara, Katie. I am 
I am James and I'm playing Katie <laughs> Wilkes. Uh, like the nerdiest nerd that ever did nerd. I'm strolling back into the house uh, and coming to, coming to my attention that I've spent the last night gambling, getting into fights, and then this morning breaking into a professor's office. I am not being a very good nerd. At least I haven't been for the last 24 hours. And I think it's starting to weigh on my conscience as now I think, oh my God, you know, books, I need to get out. There's so much to do. I have to, what have I, what have I done? And I'm, I'm kind of uh, a little overwhelmed, I think. What would your, uh, your twin sister, Violet, think? Do you think she'd behave similarly in this situation or would she be more level-headed than you? I uh, look, she'd always be perfect. No matter what the situation is, she would have made the right call. She but she would have gambled better, assuming that gambling was the right thing to do. She would have broken into the room more expertly. She would have charged that strange drunk alongside Chaz instead of hiding behind a car in the rain. But you know, such is life. Katie survived, and people that do those sort of things tend not to. Alright. Fantastic. Um, so where we pick back up, it is uh, early in the morning. Um, most of the students in the McLaren farmhouse have stirred into life and have loaded up the uh, Harlow's truck with those bright orange containers from Federated Oil and Chemical, which contain all the geological equipment. And I believe also you've uh, confirmed that you are grabbing the camera is going to head up to the dig site and the phonograph is going to be going to uh, Miss Bellwether um, when you go to interview her. Perfect. Um, well, let's begin with Chaz and Katie. So in the morning, um, the, th the truck's ready to depart. Uh, uh, so the truck's going to depart soon, just, as, uh, just when Blaine gets back with the bus so the rest of the students can get on board. Is there anything else you want to be doing in the early morning? I'll have gone back and packed all my books that I need for the day, getting a bit more serious. I will stop very briefly to um, uh, speak to Chaz, seeing that I presume he's getting, like, you know, nothing ready together. And I'll say, you, you know, you, you, don't, you don't have to not do any work if you don't, if you don't <laughs> want to, you know. Nice try, Katie. I'm not an amateur when it comes to truth or dare, all right? You, you can try as much as you like. It's not going to change anything. Okay, okay. Well, look, I... I'm uh, I'm gonna have a look at the books today, and uh, I guess, I guess we'll see what we find. All right, keep me posted. I will. I think those, that, that disc, those, that thing covered in text, uh, whatever that was, that was really weird. But I don't think, I don't think we. Maybe you should bring that with you. What did we do with it? We put the box back in the room, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, but we hid the um, we hid all the effects inside uh, the barn near where we had. That's the right. Room. Yeah, yeah. All I right. think the box is very empty now. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. The box is empty, but it appears to still be locked and secure because uh, we took the pin out of the hinges instead of breaking the lock. Uh, all right. I mean, I'll carry it around. You want me to? I guess it's just you know worth. Whatever it is, I, I, I'd feel better knowing that one of us had an eye on it and it wasn't about to vanish. I'll yeah. try and get any information I can together in the meantime. You know what? If you're going to the library, maybe I can uh, have a quick uh, chat to Wendell, see if he wants to see it. You got a problem with that? No, I think... Uh, well, Wendell said that we better be, we better be careful. Listen, Chaz, I just, I just had a thought then. You said that when you were the, the photos you told me to get a picture of the rocks those little yeah. drawings did you say can you describe them again i can i do so uh yeah so they were a series of images of what looked to be fleeing um abenaki indians um uh firing at some sort of creature or thing That's in the right. sky as I'm they were in a mass retreat. And again, these they're, they're petroglyphs. They're like thin carvings in the rock. They were very heavily weathered, and this was like an interpretation. Uh, you never study them super closely. I'm just remembering now that grainy little picture that we got shown. Yeah, it was something in the sky, right? Near the... Yeah. Uh, in, uh, under the moonlight. It's familiar. Does it look like, to you, the two matched, maybe? Well, I mean, come on. That's a smudge. That's a smudge on a picture. I guess you're right. Well, look, if you go to talk to him, be careful and don't get spotted, yeah? But... Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Blaine sees me around Wendell's place, he's going to whoop me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, look, all right. good luck. And, um, you know, Seb's on top of all of this too. You can you can trust him as well. Aye, aye. All right, so I'll retrieve the discs and uh, stuff them in my jacket and head to town. Yeah, so um, those discs once more, it's a series of... Uh, like octagonal no sorry not octagonal hexagonal um discs are all collected on a single rod and they're covered in text on every side as you carry them it's about this big so obscuring it you need you've grabbed like a duffel bag or something and jammed it in there under a couple of t-shirts so no one notices it but it's very heavy and it's kind of awkward to carry and it shifts a little bit um it's also quite cool to the touch and seems to be fairly constantly so touching it it's not enough to like make your skin stick but given the summer that you're currently in and like the humidity and heat that pervades everything, this seems to be somewhat immune to that. Um, Katie, you've got all the books jammed into your book bag alongside your other notes. And at this point you all head out as uh, the bus returns and Blaine parks it and everyone begins to load up. Joe Harlow, the local fellow, very like weathered and um, uh, world savvy, um, is looking over everything with concern and as people are heading towards the buses and trucks and things he's going and just make sure that everyone brings uh, necessary supplies it's it it's, could get a little rocky out there today um, and he's making sure people have like canteens ponchos uh, tops for the geology geology team and it seems pretty in hand but he's concerned that this weather is going to continue sometimes they can last for days at a constant just downpour everyone heads onto the bus and you head into Cobb's Corners um, all right, so uh, Seb, you were with Clarissa and Trent. As you all leave the church, the bell is sort of like still tolling a little bit, and uh, the two altar boys, Jason and Jacob, have the doors held open so everyone can come out. There is a slightly, um, I wouldn't say awkward feel to everything, but people are like, it was it's tense, given the, the recent declarations made by the Reverend. Um, and as people begin to gather in the area outside, you can see in the distance, uh, through the heavy pouring rain, uh, the lights of the bus followed by Harlow's truck arriving at uh, the general goods store. Is there anything you want to do before heading over there? Um, yeah, I'm going to go over to Clarissa. Sure. Um, and just ask Miss Thurber how she found the sermon. Um, it, it was unusual, certainly, but, um, I mean, small towns like this, they have their own, uh, access to grind and their own ways of doing things. Uh, I did feel, it's good to see someone cares, I think, um, and it's good to see that someone recognizes that things are, I don't know, that just feel weird here. Um, at least we're not you know, crazy. We're not blind. It, things are odd, right? Ask not for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> I think I see the bus, so I'm gonna go and sure. see how everyone is, but um, are, you're on the geology expedition today, are you not? Yes, um, and I need to get going there soon. I'm Hoping we can have a little bit more luck. I mean, in this sort of rain, I imagine any work we did yesterday is going to be completely lost. So we're starting again anyway. I think once we get up there, we might actually be able to check out somewhere new. Maybe see if we can, I don't know, find whatever this mineral we're looking for is. Or, I don't know. I'm hopeful. Well, this weather seems particularly inclement, so do please be careful. Uh, you as well. Um, and then she, like, unfills her own umbrella... Um, steps down into the rain and begins to head off towards the bus. Um, Trent, uh, after the service, lingered on the inside a little bit and he still hasn't made his way out. Um, the Reverend is standing at the door. Uh, some of the locals that he recognizes, he's like shaking their hands and, you know, saying, have a, have a good day and everything. Um, you can see Miss Holly Rydell, the school mom, is just gathering up her things and beginning to make the run back through the rain towards her home. Um, and there's a couple of the other locals around. Um, I will uh, go up to Miss Rydell uh, and offer 
to escort her home with my umbrella if she looks like she doesn't have one, uh, because that's the polite thing to do. Oh, um, so charming. Uh, certainly. Um, and she extends an arm, uh, so that you can actually no. She takes your arm <laughs> other way around. Uh, yep. And um, <laughs> underneath works. this big umbrella, you begin to step through the rain. It's heavy and just hammering down on the thin fabric. Um, and as you look around, you can see the streets beginning to fill with water. Um, all the other people that were at the service have made their way back indoors, rushing from one way to the other. Um, and you kind of walk in silence for the first little period. When you like started clapping at the end of the service, Holly was one of the few that joined you, oh, <laughs> um, seeming to be a little concerned about the goings on and you kind of just walk clearly both thinking about it who's the first to say anything oh almost certainly said um who will just uh say miss raydell um that was quite a stirring sermon by your uh reverend is that is that his normal uh, level of fervor Oh, no, no, not at all. He's been very reserved since he arrived. I think he knows he's uh, new in town and he wants to respect everyone else. Um, I get the feeling he might have been, I don't know, holding back what he really thinks, hoping he didn't offend anyone. I mean, his son's here. I guess he just wants to be safe, but I, I don't know. I think, I think it's good. You know, I, I really, I really do. Feels like someone's, I don't know, looking out for us. It's always good to have someone put the fear of God in those who need it. Hmm? Yeah, and let them know that it's it's here. I mean, I don't know this 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 town. I I, I grew up here. I I I love it here. I went away for a, a while, but I you know. Most people come back, it's a little slice of uh, slice of heaven in the middle of nowhere, and I'd like to see it preserved. And I think the Reverend's one of the few that's well, looking to do that. It is a particularly delightful town you have here. I, I'm enjoying myself. It's also, like, as the two of you were talking and describing this place, you are in heaving sheets of rain and wind that cuts down from the mountains and you're doing the whole walk at about a 45-degree angle or something, <laughs> trying to push forward through it. Um, you get up towards the, the small schoolhouse. It's all closed down. There's no um, school today and there's a little attached cottage not far from it. Um, as you get under the eaves of the house, um, uh, she turns and, 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 and she thanks you for walking her up there. Um, could you, uh, is, is there anything more you want to you say to her, actually? Uh, just to request uh, that perhaps if she has some time before we leave, I would very much appreciate uh, having a chance to interview her to learn more about the, the history of the town, given she said she grew up here. Um, essentially a very bland, would you mind if I interview? Well, she says, I mean, you're here now, and in this sort of rain, you're going to want to make as few stops as possible. No point trekking back and forth. Why don't you come in now? I'll make coffee or something. We can we can get to it. Do I have time before heading out to the, like, I would know? You were planning to go, like, early afternoon or something. It was, it was kind of oh, okay. It was, it like, was you, later You on. didn't have a set time. It was like, okay. hey, I'll turn up, and hopefully you haven't left yet, I guess. I'll uh, probably I head off. It, it's quite early. It's like seven in the morning. They probably yeah. won't go until like eleven at the earliest. Oh, that's it. So yeah, I think Seb will be like, just look at the complete torrential everything and just will say, coffee sounds delightful. And the two of you head inside. Yeah. Um. All right. So uh, back at uh where the bus pulls up, you guys stop in front of the sheriff's near that like the trifecta of Kana's. No, not even a trifecta. There's Kana's goods. The sheriff, uh, Wendell's reporting thing, and uh, the diner nearby as well. The bus stops and all of the students are departing to do interviews today, disembark, and you can see Clarissa making the sprint through the rain to join the geology team. Um, Katie and Chaz, what are you doing? What, what's your plan? You going to the library, is that right? 
I'm gonna get ready to join the geology team. Just oh, that's right. You're going geology today. I forgot. All right, that's fine. Uh, uh, well, maybe I'll uh, stop by uh, the Gazette to show this doodad to Wendell. And then, I don't know, see where the date takes me. Gonna take it easy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, uh, just be careful and I guess, I wonder what's happening tonight, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll have a snoop around, see if anyone's making any suspicious, you know, preparations for anything they shouldn't, they shouldn't need to be doing. I think it's important that we do whatever we can to try and make sure that we're all together tonight. Yeah. If, if something happens and they, you know, they can't get up to us or something, maybe, yeah. it's, maybe it's worth trying to put our foot down or something. Yeah, well, listen, you should probably talk to Harlow about that because, uh, well, you know, yesterday... He was half an hour late picking us up because Blaine didn't show up. So maybe you just you just tell Harlow, you know, you lay it down to him straight. You you don't let him give you a no for an answer. You say, you're going to pick us up at this time and this time only. Hmm. You can do that, can't you? I, I'm not... I can go with you. You want me to, you want me to tell him? I, I'll tell him. I'll give him the lowdown. I'll give him the skinny. Yeah, maybe that's the best idea. I've got yeah, some. Yeah, all right. I've all got right. some. We could try and pay him, maybe. I've got a little bit of money. Let's try my way first. Okay. All right. Uh, so you'd had this, you had this conversation, like just uh, standing in the doorway to the, like near the diner underneath those eaves, uh, as people were moving some of the equipment off, and most of the interview team is beginning to scatter. Uh, you see, Jason Trent doesn't return from, uh, he, he didn't come back. There's no reason to. Uh, you see, Laszlo and Noakes both get off and clutching like waterproof bags. They begin to head off towards the houses for general interviews. Gibbon surveys everything and goes right back into the diner. Um, <laughs> and uh, Blaine is still in the bus waiting for everyone to get back on. Harlow over by his truck is like checking tie downs and making sure things are last appropriately uh, when the two of you can walk up to him. <clears throat> hey, Harlow. What can I do for you? Well, I'm staying in town, but my good friend Katie's going up in the hills today, and uh, I just want to tell you, you make sure they get picked up, right? You're not going to leave them out in this, in this rain, because no matter what Blaine says, if he's going to be as late as he was yesterday, then everyone up there is going to be stuck in a bit of trouble. So you got to make sure you stick to the schedule, not Blaine's schedule, because his schedule seems to be a little bit looser than anyone else is expecting. See, I, I reckon you, you stick to your schedule and you make sure everyone gets back in one piece. Make sense to you? Makes sense to me. Um, do you want to give me an intimidation check? Do you want to try yeah. and drill this into his head? Just a little bit, yeah. If, if I may, I'd like to add a little bit of like, you know, I've, I've just been, I've just been, you know, feeling a little sick recently. You know, I, I had I had a sleepwalking incident and, you know, I don't want to be trapped in the car. Basically try and, I would like to try and provide a bonus die, but the idea is yeah, I'm giving call. like, I'm trying to give the idea that there is a reason that why Chaz could be so worried about me kind of thing. Yeah, good take, call, a, bad take, take a bonus dice, Chaz. It's the, Excellent. the dream team. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Thank yes. you, Katie, but uh, we got it. I think I got this under control. Okay. Um, so what you'll realize, you, you drill it through, but before you're starting, Harlow's nodding. And he's looking over towards the bus, and as he like he sees where Blaine is, he just shakes his head and goes, "No, I, I completely agree. The way he left y'all up there yesterday was shameful. It's not gonna happen again. Hell or high water, whether he wants it or not, I'll be back there as soon as I need to be." Listen, Miss Wilkes, right. uh, and he goes to you, Katie, and he um, uh, actually goes into like his glove box on his truck, and he pulls out a couple things. Uh, one is a compass. Um, in like a little tin case and it's quite weathered clearly seen in a few years of uh, use it's got a little um, frayed piece of string on it where previously once it was probably tied around the neck or something and the second is a heavy powerful torch um, he passes both of those to you and he goes listen worst case the bus is going to be parked not too far from the place where you're going to be dropped off so what happens is Things get too bad and I ain't back yet. Start making your way back down towards the bus. Anything comes through, hail it with the torch. Take shelter there and I'll come get you. Understand? I uh, understood. Thank you very much, sir. He like claps on the shoulder. He goes, you're going to be all right. It gets a little wet out there. It'll be slippery, but you know, look out for one another and you'll be okay. I'll back for you before you know it. 
Great. Thank you so much. Not an issue. Uh, he goes back to, like, re-tying things down. I'm pretty sure I told Sim and Katie about the lights we saw on the way back. I think you did. I think we just said, oh, we catch everyone up. Yep. So, uh, you know about the uh, lights we saw in the forest on the way back. That's, that's concerning. Mm. Unless there is... Yeah, unless we've specified otherwise, everyone knows everything, except I don't think Seb knows about the discs or the books yet. Not and yet. That's true. you two don't know about the... the you know about preacher. the doctor. Like, you know what the doctor told me, but you don't know it was the doctor, that's, and I haven't, haven't told you about the priest yet, obviously. Yeah, good that's stuff. Kind of well, In general, I'd say we tend to do shared information with exceptions is the easiest. As soon as you guys re-catch up, we'll assume it is. And if it's narratively interesting, we'll zoom in on actually telling it. Okay, um, uh, Blaine uh, leans out and, and goes, Katie, you coming? Let's go. Yes, yep, uh, good luck, Chaz. You scurry oh, back off. up onto the bus, um, and with a lurch, it begins to take off, heading up into the mountains. Um, a few things that you'll just notice as you take in the town, very quiet, no, not quiet. In the heaving rain, very few people are moving today. The diner is seeing little activity. Um, Gibbons is posted up in there. Um, and you'll notice that like a lot of people are just taking the day. It's a Sunday as well. Just kind of take it easy, maybe catch up on reading. Um, quickly, you will see that uh, the sheriff is nearby. He's headed into Kana's general goods, and his truck is parked out the front. Um, and uh, actually, where are you heading, Chaz? You're heading across the office to Wendell. Uh, to the Gazette, yeah. Let's have a look at this handy-dandy map. Um, okay, yeah. No worries. Alright, so you're gonna head there. Um, okay. Uh, let's look in on... Uh, Seb. Uh, so Seb up at, uh, the, um, the school teacher's house. Uh, it's a very quaint little cottage. Uh, she inherited it from her mother, um, who, um, is in one of the adjacent rooms. Uh, she's older and, and, like, quite frail. Um, and, uh, she's kind of begun to make herself at home. She gets, uh, some coffee and things and, and, and sets yourselves up on a small table and you go through the motions of the interview. Um, it's all pretty standard. Her general story, she was born here. She went away, um, thinking that she'd study in, you know, uh, uh abroad and, and possibly teach in one of the bigger towns, but ultimately was drawn back here when her mother fell sick. And then she, you know, kind of remember why she loved the place and she likes helping the, the students. Um, as you go through, though, you, you will begin to find a, a slight sticking point, which is that when she talks about the, the students, she, not completely nervously, but she like she pauses and, and lingers on the phrase a couple times, and her coffee cup, which is going cold in her hands, is just being tapped rhythmically by her ring finger. Um, in one of these points, she's sort of looking up, and she's saying, I... I just don't know. I mean, you know, places change, right? And I've been away for a while, I guess. Maybe just the... I guess it's just different experiences. It's not quite like it was when I was when I was young here. Um, but I'm sorry, this, is, this isn't this is relevant. <laughs> it's your interview. Um, uh, what, what specifically did you want me to talk about? Actually, <clears throat> things changing and being different to what they were uh, is exactly what we are interviewing about. Um, specifically, we're here to talk about the folklore of the town, you know, but folklore, it, it can be anything from back, you know, 50, 100 years ago, people used to believe that pixies roamed the forest, to I went away and came back and now my town is different. Those are both part of what makes the law of a town. Sure, sure. Um, well, I mean, kids are always perceptive to that kind of thing. I I've been away for a while and I, I don't think I know any nothing too exciting uh, more than anyone else could tell you but i mean the kids are perceptive they, they pick things up and they i think that i guess they hear their their parents telling stories and they misinterpret them and they and, and they run with them and they they they'll grab onto these ideas and turn them into little songs and and games and they'll have fun with them and i mean it, it's healthy you know it's 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 how we socialize it's how kids get to know each other it's how they make friends and how they begin to understand what it is to be in a community but uh, without the context uh, some of them can be a, a little a little strange 
Do you have an example you're willing to share? Uh, she reaches back into her pocket and draws out uh, a folded up piece of paper. Uh, the piece that she was handed by one of the children not that long ago. And I'm going to share you a handout. Ooh, a handout time. <laughs> Love it. All right, you all should be able to see that. And I'll just put it up on the screen for our... Oh, my God. Viewers. Okay. That's delightful. I love it. And she goes... That's the best handout I've ever seen in a Cthulhu game. I am goes, so into that. <laughs> the kids are... I mean, it's a... You know, the, the, with the storm and, and the rain and everything, I guess they're just... I don't know. Nervous, but... I mean, they... I don't know. They, they Kids interpret things weird. It's through a lens, right? I mean, some of the well most well-known nursery rhymes are about death and disaster. I think that's just what small minds are drawn to, and then they try and make sense of it, so... Huh. It's... Um... When do you when do you need to be getting back? Oh, um, I am heading out with uh, the the Connor General Goods run out to Miss Bellwether, so probably within the next hour or so. But <clears throat> why, why is that? Uh, the, the 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 kids have a. It's like you said, the kids have a a, a nursery rhyme actually, or a, a, a oh god, or it's 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 a song. Um, I don't remember it exactly, but they they they'll sing it sometimes. Um in between classes or while they're playing games outside in in this weather they're not going to be out but uh, i was thinking maybe if you i don't know if you run into them maybe you, you might be able to to talk to them see if they'd share it with you um any other day i'd say come in and sit on our class and, and you'll see it but um maybe tomorrow if you, if you want to come back i think uh it has been a while since i have <laughs> enjoyed that kind of classroom i think that could be quite a lot of fun um, sure if, well, uh, if if it's not too disturbing to your class i would i would be delighted they will be distracted but they will love it <laughs> and if it keeps them uh, if, if it keeps their attention any longer than a few minutes it will be uh, oh, well worth your time i'm sure i can keep the attention of a few small children for a while well, I, I have some that. stories um she uh like finishes her, her coffee and everything and um you talk a little bit more just kind of like socially she's actually just very pleasant um she asks about you a lot and just kind of like about uh what you're doing and about i don't know 10 percent of it's actually useful for the interview but it's just kind of like just turns into sort of like a social visit every now and then she has to get up and help her her mother um make sure that she's all right um and you can see she's you know nervous for her but overall a very has a very positive outlook on a lot of things. Um, there is one other thing I did want to bring up um, mm -hmm. during this off, like if we're having this kind of conversation, should just be like, oh, um, you know, offhandedly, someone mentioned that the the church has actually been closed for a period before the the current reverend. Is it a reverend? I fucking don't remember. Yep, it is. Great reverend. Uh, since the current reverend, uh, do you know who was here before and then why it was why it was closed? You know, I don't. We, the church isn't that old. Um, it was actually built while I was young, when I was first oh. here. Um, but it never really, it never really took, you know? People here had their own stories and their own practices and they didn't feel the need for God, I guess. It was only when I went away and, and found him that I really looked forward to, to the Reverend joining us here. Um, but I know it's it's had short-term visitors. I mean, as the Reverend mentioned, he was a, a traveling preacher who settled down. We, we've had those likes before, and it really just turned into sort of like a, just a community space that we'd use for events and things. It wasn't really a house of God until recently. Sorry, you said um, you found him. Do you, do you mean God? God. Or do you... God. I see. Him. Capital H. Yeah. Of course. Um... That is interesting. I, I, from my knowledge of towns generally, churches are almost the first thing to be built, not the last. Um, do you know who would know about? You say that the town has its own traditions. Traditions are 
kind of what we're here to, to, to talk about. Is there someone you know of who would be helpful in... in uh... Oh, God. Well, um, Miss Carruthers, the librarian, she's lived here all her life, and um, she's a little... Um, she enjoys her books, and she's not one for talking. I don't know that she'd like to be interviewed, but she might be able to point you towards an interesting tome or, or something that documents the town's history. Um, uh, I'm sure the sheriff has an interesting perspective on things. And there's... What's that woman we used to... Oh, God, it's coming back to me now. It was this old woman... Uh, not so old when I was young. Um, used to work as a town a doctor and things. God, we terrorize that Ms. sweet thing. Bellwether? Yes. Yes. That's I it. Am... I think she still lives near town. Yes, that is where I will be headed next to speak to her, so that is oh. helpful to know. Good. It's funny. It's still... Something about the name. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, we, we were... God, so cruel to her when we were kids. <laughs> she was only trying to help. I mean town doctor and all i'm sure she'll be very interesting um good luck getting out there as well in this rain <laughs> well we have organized a lift so hopefully it will not be too much of a bother but um one last thing before i i depart uh, i hope you don't mind uh, you mentioned that you were here as a child you, you left you came back do you still uh, see any of your friends from when you were younger? Are there, are there many people who, who leave and come back or, or stay? Or is this one of one of a different lot? At this point, you're like, you've gathered up some of your things. Yeah, um, yeah this is like, as I'm yeah, leaving, it's it's exactly it's like you're designed to be eaves. offhand, but... No, 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 I get you. Uh, you're like standing in the eaves and the, the rain's dropping down around you. You've just begun to open up your umbrella again. Um, and she's like drawn a shawl around herself and she's standing in the doorway looking out into the rain and she says well you know the sheriff wasn't much older than me I remember him when we were younger most people that got away they split up we never really keep track of things I mean it's it's, it's hard across the country to, to, to talk to folks um, I was disappointed when I came back to I mean a lot of people had 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 um had passed in um oh. accidents and i i don't know farming life can be a tough life i'm sorry i did not mean to uh pry and leave this on such a, a down note no no and look come back tomorrow you can see the kids um it'll be good i would be delighted uh, and um thank you this has been a nice diversion. Oh, thank you again, uh, Mr. McCarthy. Um, and right out. the uh, <laughs> umbrella out and begin to head through the rain back towards Cobb's Corners. Um, all righty. Can uh, I mention something very quickly while we, while we move through? Regarding that picture, I don't know if you can bring it up again. Yeah, the one thing that. about that picture that is just purely the worst is that all of the characters um in the pile of bodies are frowning they're sad they're not having a good time the kids really made it clear that they're upset which is just a level of detail that didn't feel necessary <laughs> i mean they've also been dismembered which yeah, is but... you know like at that point i feel like you're pretty miserable when bits of your body are scattered around a bloody field yeah but, I, for, I... but for everyone who's not dismembered they're having a great time yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't know. I was. I when when I used to draw cryptic, terrifying drawings to you know uh, make my parents think that I was very deeply unwell. I would put crosses on the eyes of dead things because that seems like the uh, the appropriate thing. To I mean, do. they do. They do have little lines. Oh, actually, they all kind of have lines. I don't know. I think. I think they're just sad and that's awful. <laughs> I think maybe they're not dead. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. All right. You're welcome. Ugh. All right. Uh, so, Chaz, you wanted to go to the, the reporter. Is that right? Yeah. Wendell at the Cobb's Corners Gazette. Okay. Um, you head across the street in the rain. And when you get to the door and stop in front of it, can you please give me a spot hidden roll? Oh, no. I'm not oh, that good yeah. at those yet. 
yet. Yet. Oh, he's gonna be good. I've got it ticked, so it's gonna go up hopefully at the end of this scenario. Mm -hmm. But uh, for now, nope, blissfully okay. unaware. Uh, I mean, in this pouring rain, it doesn't seem to be that too many people are looking out. So unless you're gonna allow me to to listen, you know, I've probably already rolled it's too late. You could no, no, no. Uh, listen, to, if if you th if Chaz is being cautious and would stop under the eaves and and try and listen out, you can try it. It will be hard. Um, I think I think I would because I know the uh, deputy's up to no good, uh, and I know the deputy's got a history with Wendell. So I think I'd probably okay. just stop at the door and just see who's inside if I can hear anything. <sighs> uh, no, I'd rather keep my luck. Yeah. Um, you cannot that. from here. You can't hear anything. You can just hear the rain hammering down just nearby. And since you're under the eaves, it all collects up and. Like, it's even heavier here, so it's like a wall obfuscating any sound. There is no sound from the interior either. Like, you can't hear conversation or anything, but you're just unable to pick up anything else. Um, oh, well. Do? Knock on the door. Okay. Um, you knock on the door. There's a pause, and you can hear a, a chain latch slide open. And then uh, Wendell opens the door, sees it's you, and goes, Did anyone see you come in here? Uh, maybe. I mean, it's raining. No one's going to be looking out, yeah, We'll they? get inside quickly. Come on. Oh, yeah. We were meant to be, like, you know, discreet. Uh, that's yeah, why we came discreet. out the back last time. Get inside. All right. I remember now. All right. Jeez. It was one leave. day ago. She didn't leave the back last time. They, he does not have, like, a secret back door. You just have to kind of oh. run. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll run inside. Yep. All right. You scurry in and he, and he slams it shut. Um, the interior is again this like uh, conspiracy uh, walls everywhere, just like local notes and things. He's got the dark room, which you were locked in briefly. Um, and then he brings you back to his offices, which is as you come inside, he's looking around frantically, like pulling curtains closed and things. And he goes, This better be important, Dedrick. Uh, oh, sorry, Mr. Well, Dedrick. Mr. Dedrick to you. Yeah, uh, well, I know how you told us yesterday about, you know, the, the deputy and how he may have tried to burn down your office. And I know you said you weren't 100% sure. I think you'd be 100% sure now, because he was up to no good last night. I'll tell you that for free. What do you know? Well, uh, you, you know, dr the, the drunk, Jimmy, he stumbled out and drove out to the farmhouse where our students were staying, and he, uh, you know, in a rage, brandishing a shotgun out. I managed to defuse the situation, fortunately, and someone called the cops, of course, and the deputy showed up. But here's the thing. He showed up a bit faster than he had any right to be, right? Not only that, but it turned out Jimmy's shotgun was not even loaded. So that's weird, right? This thing goes deep. I think you're onto something here. This thing goes deeper than we thought. Not only that, but the deputy was wandering around with our, you know, our man Blaine le uh, yeah, sometime yesterday. Blaine, who, by the way, was nowhere to be seen when Jimmy shows up drunk, stumbles in after the event. But here's the thing. He wasn't as drunk as he seemed. I got a good whiff of him. He seemed to go like he was blind staggering around, but nah, I think he was just toasted. Do you want to talk about the petroglyphs too <laughs> while we're just unloading info? It is probably oh, like yeah. The... <laughs> also, oh, are you telling him about like the discs as well? Like, are we yeah, just I'm going... getting to that. I'm getting uh, to that. Wait a second. I'm building. I'm building here. <laughs> I'm building. <laughs> just, just for context, as you're talking, I think a lot of people would just be overwhelmed. Wendell is like, I fucking knew it. And he goes to the couch getting paper and he's like writing shit down as you're going. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, proceed. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, also, you know, yesterday, I can't remember if we told you this or not already, but, you know, yesterday, Blaine was meant to pick up some of the students out in the geology dig, didn't show up, because uh, Harlow was late picking us up, because Blaine straight up didn't show up. We get back, we found out he spent the day with the deputy. So the deputy and Blaine are like this, all right? That's what I came here to say. Blaine's, Blaine's the one that, uh... He lost the last he wasn't with the last group right yeah 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 he, well, he was here last year right and then he didn't come back for the uh for the second trip the follow-up trip is that right was he here in the first yeah he yeah here, yeah no, he, that's was right. here, Both. he was here for the first one he was gonna come back for the second one where it went wrong that's but right he got delayed that's he, right he, he was sick. sick i mean he must yeah. have known something he must have he knows and, and, something. And you're saying he's working with the deputy that's yeah and he's bitch. come back this year you know and uh, yeah, uh, it, but it gets it gets deeper. All right, is, is that all squared away? You got that under your belt? Wait, uh, hang, on, hang on, hang on. Do it up another notch. 
Okay, all right, I'll get a second belt. Uh, give me one <laughs> second. You said the deputy came by last night. Last night. Yeah, and after we Jimmy. called the cops to get Jimmy, but he showed up way faster than he should have. Okay, no, I, hang on, that's... That tracks. I was I was up last night working, uh, and, and uh, well, early this morning. I have not technically been to sleep. Um, and <laughs> oh, no. I saw I saw the I saw the, the a truck coming through. Stopped over at uh, the doc's office um, early this morning, just just a little before sunrise. So I mean that must be tight. If if you brought in your your man, um, he'll be over at the doc's right now, right? Wait, who who's the man? Your, your fellow. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Had... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I guess right. that tracks. Oh, shit, I, I gotta go yeah. talk to that goddamn doctor. Uh, I need to you something. Please, please remind me of anything and everything. You found the letter. I think it was you. You found, you found Anne McLaren's letter that definitely suggested she was expecting to come home the night she didn't. You found it in his glove box. Yeah, the, in the glove box, yeah. It was just Looking like the generic, like, I'm looking <laughs> forward to... Katie, I think Katie... I, 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 oh, I, did Katie I, I pulled it out and read it, but I put it back. I don't. We don't have it, but, you know. Yeah. I've forgotten this entirely. The letter <laughs> from Jimmy's wife? Yeah. yeah there was, so when we were clearing. going through his truck, we, we were looking for stuff, and there was a letter from his wife, which was seemed to particular... Like, uh, the, the note was that it was a particularly mundane letter. It wasn't like a, I plan to die this evening kind of letter. It was, yeah, a, was just like, a minor I'm, I'm going to go down to the shops, and I'll see you later, right. and I love you lots, and, like, just... But it was... The implication... And maybe Dave, correct us if we're wrong, but the implication was quite possibly the last letter he has that was written by yeah, her yeah, before yeah. she died. Seen, and if, like, if that's a mundane letter, that has some well, further questions. Well, she seemed to be holding on to it, yeah. Look, I'll slip that into the details, but Chaz was busy elsewhere, <laughs> I think, around the time that letter was discovered, so uh, it didn't make an impression on him. Yeah. Uh, okay, but you got all that squared away, right? Sure. Just making sure you have the maximum possible ammunition for whatever this train wreck is. Oh, I don't. I, this isn't. This isn't. Ammunition implies like this has a purpose. This is. This is. Uh, this is targeted. It is Jazz not. Jazz is just pushing buttons and seeing what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's try this dialogue option. Seeing eh, which one eh, is eh. the nuclear warhead button. <laughs> okay, but this morning, I break into Blaine's room. And I find a lockbox, and I open <laughs> up shit. said lockbox. <laughs> Inside, he has a, uh, uh, well, what used to be, what used to have a revolver. He's got a case for a revolver, no revolver. He's carrying, he's packing, and he's wandering around the town with this deputy packing a revolver. Not only that, four, you know, crazy books with, you know, scribblings and highlights in the margins about witchcraft and occultism and whatnot. I don't know. It's something, it's something. He's he's not right in the head. But also, these. I pull out the discs. Now, what do you know about these, Mr. Wendell? He's, like, scribbling furiously, and then you withdraw from the bag, like, the T-shirt wraps thing, and you put it on the desk. He flips the notebook closed and, and crouches down in front of it. He goes, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> If if I can be, if I can add a little cinema to the scene and sort Please. of, uh, I, I imagine if this was kind of like cut in between with Katie at the back of the bus scrolling notes down that sort of like link threads, doing my kind of nerdy trying to piece things together, I'd like to I'd like to share. I think the uh, the 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 obvious now it's all coming together is that uh, these these the deaths in the past. Uh, have been we we know that this place was somehow particularly prosperous right more beyond what it should be the deaths were in somehow fueling that protecting this place providing it with food and they needed to keep happening for some reason uh blaine and the deputy organized for the students who came to replace whatever flood of new sacrifices were needed to make and now uh blaine's come back to bring more sacrifices with the deputy so they don't have to keep picking from their own flock I think that's the key. I like it. it. So as Katie's like riding this in the back of the bus, it's bumping up along the things as you're going deeper and deeper into the woods without any of your friends. You keep on looking up and you can't help but notice that Blaine keeps looking in the rear view mirror right <laughs> at you. Oh, no. And then looking back down at the road and just sheets of rain around you. Um, awesome. All right, back in the, uh, in the office, Chaz. Yeah, ever seen these things before? What do they do? What are they good for? I, I, I got no idea what this is. I mean, there's some ah, kind of like... He's like, touches them and he like... They twist. 
and they like like tumblers they like click into another position and he goes what is this written in i don't know not any language that uh me or my learned friends know why would he have this is this like a like a like a decorative piece I don't know, it puts me in mind of like, uh, you know, one of them puzzle locks, puzzle boxes, or maybe like a decoder ring, you know, that you used to get in the Boy Scouts. Puzzle maybe he's box. a Boy Scout, maybe that's his big secret, I don't know. I don't think that's shameful enough. <laughs> okay, well, so he's got... No, hang on, we can... we can work with this. We can... we can... there's a story here. Okay, alright. Local student. Kills... No, don't... come on, eh? don't put this in my paper yet, right? Well, I mean, we, we got we got fuel here, Mr. Dedrick. We got we got to start lighting fires. Okay, but if you light a fire, then the next fire is going to be lit and is in your dark room again. Yeah, the yeah. deputy's going to come right in and burn it down. We got to wait till this all blows over and we get this guy before you start, you know, roasting him in the paper. Shit. So you say so Blaine's carrying and he's working yeah. with this deputy. Yeah, and okay. they're up to something tonight. How do you know that? Well, they got a calendar, a journal of some kind, and they're, they're making a big hub about something going down tonight, but we don't know what. Fucking hell. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. He's like pacing so, back and forth. Son of a bitch. <laughs> so that's why I came here, because you got your eyes on the town, right? You know everything that's going on. They're preparing for something to happen tonight, and we got to find out what it is. Okay. All right. I got to leave town. I gotta leave town. What? I gotta what leave town. Got I, I can't right. be here if he's stalking the streets. What do you? What do you think he's gonna fucking do to me? Well, I, I, there's nothing worse he's gonna do with the rest of the town. You can't run away. <laughs> what? I, I'm not. I. I'm not a fighter, Mr. Dedrick. I'm a. I give the truth to the people that need it. I've got the truth here. I'm taking these. I'm going to Brattleboro. I'm going to Brattleboro. What's in Brattleboro? Oh, oh. It's a bigger town. They got more police. They got police that aren't on the on on this roll or whatever. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna get this story. I'm gonna start documenting and I'll, I'll figure out what's happening. But if something's going down tonight, I I can't be involved in this. I I, <laughs> I gotta. Well, I don't got a wife or kids, but I got, got me to look after, Mr. Dedrick. I I, I uh, he goes over and he grabs like a bag and he starts shoving papers into it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that bag and grab it close and slam it down to the table and fix him with an eye. And I'm gonna say, look at all this town's done for you. Look at everything you built. Everything you are has come from this town. And maybe they don't know how much they owe you, how much you've given back. But if you run away tonight, you'll be leaving it to burn. And I don't think that's going to weigh very nicely on your conscience. Do you want to give me... Here's the thing. Intimidation is a, a little bit of a stretch. It is. And I think... You dick! <laughs> <laughs> One of these! <laughs> uh, I, I'll take... I'll, I, you can go intimidation, but uh, it's going to be hard difficulty yeah, and if fair. you fail more serious route because like you're basically threatening him and you know you're yeah. like you're going like and also i also oppose you um yeah. uh go ahead and roll otherwise persuasion or charm are you know more realistic no no it's, yeah chas has only got intimidate that's, he's only got uh, one, one flavor that's all he's got he's got uh, one gear here it comes <laughs> skids off the track okay oh you push it no, no push it like well hang on What's already happening is, is as you do that, he looks up and he sees you towering over him and he just sees another threat. If you push this, I, I think it's your like, you gotta like jam him in the dark room or something and lock the door and be like, you can come out when you're sensible. Like you're really escalating and you are actively being hostile. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, how could I not? Okay. Again, you need a hard success. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh all my good. God. I think he's either going to be helpful or he's dead to us. So okay. I don't care what happens next. Here it comes. Hurry! Oh. oh my God. This is going to be a disaster. You. Uh, I start pushing him toward the uh, dark room. 
you push it you you like you, you he's got his bag with the notes in it right and that's what you want him to look into so you like grab that he's, he's he's got it bundled and start pushing him towards the dark room as you get him into the door you like jam in you, you swing it open and as you go to uh, as you go to slam it shut uh richard wendell the reporter has drawn a pistol <laughs> and is pointing it at you and he goes no no you son of a bitch i ain't going back in there and you can't make me you just like him hell you're probably involved with him you're one of these fucking students as well you come in here and back up. Back up. I back up. Because you come in here and you try and run this town. You tell me how to do my job. God damn it, you make me fucking sick. Fuck you. Fuck this place. I'm getting out of here. All right, Wendell. He begins Wendell. to like swing around to the door. Again, pistol drawn. It's a small one. It's on a massive pace, but he's got his finger on the trigger. All right. You can go, but if you want to make up for it, you do what you can when you get to Battleborough or whatever. Oh, I'll tell them the fucking truth. I'll tell them everything that happened. That's um, what I want to. As he as he gets to the the door with the pistol drawn, he grabs all the notes and jams them into the bag. He also grabs the artifact. Oh, come on, man. That's all we got. It's the we fucking gotta need truth. that. You don't know anything. You're an idiot, all right? And I'll figure this out. You got no goddamn chance. You want this to get out? I'm taking this with me. This ain't a discussion. He jams into the bag and swings it over his shoulder, and he heads to the door as he kicks it open. Rain coming down. He steps back and is swallowed by the water. And you lose track of him. What do you do? Uh, kick a table. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts. You and the table. I'm going to sit oh, yeah. down and quietly think about what I've done and figure out what to do next. Okay. All right. Um, as Chaz <laughs> kicks over a table, then writes the chair and, and sits down in it, um, let's check in on, on, on Katie, who's heading up uh, towards the dig site. So the other students that are with you are uh, Block, uh, Roderick Block, Close to Thurber and uh, Harry Higgins. Um, everyone is kind of like looking out, trying to find the sound, uh, looking out at the, the, the storm coming down and following Harlow's tracks as you head up. People are, I mean, people are shaken with what happened last night. Uh, you definitely have gotten a little closer with these people, especially uh, Higgins and Block, even you were like playing cards with them and stuff the night before. And so they're kind of, engaging with you now rather than kind of ignoring you in the corner. Clarissa has basically isolated herself. Um, but they're just like talking with you about like, you know, if it's crazy, what happens, you know, do you think that guy's okay? Um, do you think he's going to come back? Where do we go from here? Um, no one's really talking about the work to be done today. They're kind of just talking about like, yeah, we'll just, we'll go up there. We'll take boxes and then we'll come back. And you know what? The real shit's happening at the farmhouse. That's way more exciting and just crazy. Um, do you, do you say anything? Do you, do you push any agenda? Um, I, I think I, I, um, I am kind of like eyeing Blaine and a little concerned. I think I push an agenda that I'm just kind of like sort of almost ditzy. Like I'm not, I'm not really, you know, I, I haven't figured out that anything's happening. I'm just like this nerd with books or I'm like just happy to have friends and I'm just going to try and play up the innocence angle. Yeah, I mean, Blaine can't really hear the conversation. He's all at the, at the front and he's occasionally checking on the students in the rear view and he seems pretty focused on the road. Maybe not as focused as you should. Okay, never mind then. I, in it's more, case, it's I more just, just you talking to the other students, yeah. So yeah, you I just, just chat with them happily. Awesome. Um, eventually, you get up to the um, the uh, point where the track becomes a bit less uh, like solid uh, and the bus it pulled off the side of the road and, and, and parked and um, uh, Blaine... Uh, it gets up the front and he says, all right, everyone, gather up your equipment. We're going to have to walk from here. The track is mostly lost, but uh, Mr. Harlow's truck will ford the way. Um, Clarissa, why don't you ride with him? And uh, Katie, if you want to try and squeeze in as well. Otherwise, we're all on foot. Um, everyone, like, laces up boots and things. Pulls on, like, like ponchos or whatever. And Umbrella's just completely lost out here. And steps down to start trudging behind the truck. It is hammering down just sheets of rain and even wearing ponchos and things and immediately finds crevices and you're soaked through there is a gale 
uh, rushing down through everything, uh, and you can't really hear much over just the, the sound of uh, the storm outside. If I can take a second, um, I'll pull um, Block and Higgins aside, just as we're like sort of unpacking or changing, and I, and I will say, and I, I would like to try and put them on edge that to be careful of Blaine without giving away that, you know, I'm actually properly worried about Blaine. So I'd like to say, um, you know, something like, you know, in, in weather like this, if he's been drinking, he might fall and, you know, uh, one dash on a rock and we're going to be in real bad situations. You guys probably need to keep a pretty close eye on him. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll watch for the fella. Uh, do you want to give me a fast talk roll? Yep, absolutely. Ooh, that is a fail, I'm afraid. Okay. You, I mean, just in like, it, it makes sense. Um, they seem to more get stuck in their head the fact that they didn't come back to get them last time and they were up here for ages. Um, so uh, they're more like thinking, oh, he's, he's just useless um, and probably won't come back. Uh, as you're walking up the track, Higgins keeps looking back at the parked bus um, and kind of just remembering the path as a uh, block kind of just stays kind of near you and uh, you're uh, actually, or are you going to try and ride with Harlow? I'll try and ride with Harlow. Okay, yeah. so you, you head up. Well, in that case, in the rear view, you can just occasionally see block and Higgins like pushing forward through the rain and uh, Blaine is also out there with them um, with like a torch sweeping. You get into the truck, um, Clarissa's in the passenger and you're sort of perched up on that little middle dash thing as Harlow drives it up. He's occasionally like swearing at the, the rain and shifting gears as the tires just spin in the mud. Uh, but eventually, after about an hour going up uh, through the rain, you arrive back at the dig site. People begin to hop out and unpack equipment, setting things up, and you take in the scene. That river... Actually, you've actually not been up here before. Yeah, no. so that there is a river that goes through it, which previously um, Harry Higgins swam across to, to futz around with. Uh, it has flooded and is like raging down now um the oh, uh all the, the, the cave we found was on the other side of the river the side. Yeah. uh all the uh grids that were set out to to dig in have been lost in the the flood the the string and stuff's been torn away and the mud's just been chewed back into just like like sorry the earth's been chewed into mud um and the small sections where you'd like set up uh like a couple of tarps so that you could get out of the the sun previously are completely obliterated Fortunately, most of the artifacts that were found and documented had been taken back. Um, so it's just more that you need to begin all your work again. Everyone unloads things. And then as Harlow goes about, like, checking that you're, you know, you've got a place to retreat to, to, to stay under, uh, out of the rain and things, um, Blaine gets into Harlow's truck and says, All right, so we're going to be back here at about four, okay? So be ready to go, have everything packed up, and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. And then he looks to, nods to Harlow. Harlow lingers, looking over everything, and then, uh, like, looking at you, uh, he just nods and goes, all right, be back as soon as we can. Uh, and then he gets back into it, and the truck reverses back down the way, spins around, and, and, and heads back down the hill. Perfect. Um, okay. I would like to suggest to the others almost immediately, you know, the work hasn't really begun. We're going to be going from scratch anywhere. Listen, I've spent yesterday a big bit of time at the library and I was looking at some geographical surveys of the area and looking at some old geology ideas. I reckon that we should move away from this area slightly and try instead just a little bit up north. And I would like to try and lead the group to that part place just past the site that we saw marked on uh, Blaine's map. That would be a proper, like, in good conditions, day trek or so. It's like you're like up mountains and things. Um, sure. And, like, Never mind. The... I thought it was. I thought it was kind of like a like a few hundred meters away. Never no, mind. no, sorry. It's it's quite a ways. Well, I mean, the X is just like a, a slash on it. It's kind of vague. Um, but you got the. I mean, these are like you know mountains and, and, and hills and things. It's... Um, all right. In which case, uh, I, I spend the day you know, doing what little work can be done in such rain, but basically I will spend every moment I can trying to read through those books. Okay. Um, so uh, you do have the camera with you. It's fairly delicate, and it's in a large, like, uh, secured box, but even in those conditions, it's if it, like, gets dropped from a great height or anything, or swept down a hypothetical river, I'd be in pretty bad condition. Um, do you plan to try and get it across to take photos of those petroglyphs? No, I, I don't think so. I think that's beyond me. Okay. All right. Um, apart from that, uh, you're not alone in thinking that 
re-digging here is basically a waste of time. Uh, Clarissa is going to say, well, since we're up here, we may as well make some progress. And I'm curious about these tests we're supposed to do. I'm going to suggest that we fan out, cover as much area as possible, and take small samples. We'll bring them back, run them through, and see if anything gets close to filtering and, and, and ticking one of these boxes. I just want to, I just want to see what it is we're looking for. Um, Block and Higgins are going to work with that. Uh, if you, if you like, just hide under the top or things and go through the books. For one thing, there's still rain getting through, so you're like kind of covering it with yourself or possibly like pulling a poncho over it and reading it all underneath. Um, you can. It will be shirking work and not uh, no, contributing, that's right. but I'll, I'll you can try and get away test. with a bit of it. Okay. Yep. Um, do you have any uh, geology skill? Yes, I do. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. That's probably why you're on the team. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to give me a uh, geology test? I'll give you four points of luck to bring that to a success. Okay. All right. Um, over several... Um, it, this is like over, over the, the uh, several hours... Um, you begin to fan out and take a number of traces. Uh, uh, digs, whatever. Um, and then bring them back and, and run tests. Um, Clarissa helps and is running her own as well, but the two of you will be able to begin to go through them and start ticking all these boxes. At first, nothing passes them, uh, and it's as Clarissa kind of suggested, that it just isn't possible. It's not a, it's not a real... Uh, elements, uh, nothing would, would pass these and there must be an, uh, an issue with them. Um, uh, and you're kind of just going through the motions of like, well, I guess let's try and do this because maybe they can do something with this. So you're very diligently documenting everything and making sure it is all at least recorded. Um, after an hour or so of pass of going back and forth, you guys are soaked through the bone. It's still pretty hot throughout the storm, but you're just exhausted and everything uh, requires trudging back and forth and you all kind of post up underneath the tarp for a while. Um, when, as you're doing a test, you kind of, like, d discounted it. You get through the first three stages. And then you get through another couple. And, holy shit. Y you found something, and it's, it's ticking the boxes. Something in one of the most recent samples that you took going quite a bit downstream, which actually, like, dredged from, uh, just, like, hauling muck up from what was possibly in the river, seems to be fulfilling this. Clarissa will help you. You'll, like, double-check them, unless you're pointedly keeping this secret or anything. Nah, no, I'll double-check. Um, and you begin to, to, to go over them. For context, this element, whatever it is, as you, like, filter it out and get rid of the dust and everything and, and look at it closely, it is a, like, metallic little, um like, lead-looking thing, but it's quite heavy. You've only got a small sliver of it. Um, it's, as you, like, touch it, it's almost got, like, a greasy sheen to it. Um, it has a number of impossible properties. Uh, for one, it doesn't appear to, um, uh, be affected whatsoever by, um, any extreme acids, uh, solvents, like, exposure to the air or anything. It's very, very resistant. It's also incredibly capable of carrying electric charges, meaning that it could be it could be used to um, uh, as like batteries or things. Um, and it also has an incredibly high melting point to the point that none of your tests here are able to reach it. Um, it this cannot melt it. It cannot it cannot go forward. Um, you'd need to take this back to the farmhouse to keep going, but this is the furthest anything's gotten. Um, as you're looking over these, Block and Higgins are like reasonably interested. Clarissa's completely incensed by it. Um, she's talking about how, I mean, something with these hypothetical properties is incredibly valuable. I mean, it could conduct electricity. It could be used for making, uh, like, structural stuff in, in trains or, or, or buildings. And also, I mean, once you start getting, like, military applications, sky's the limit. No wonder Federated Oil and Chemical are so interested in us digging out here. They're looking for this. Um... Could I please, uh, could I, uh, I would, I would like to, um, know if this is at a cursory level, the same as the discs. Make a, make a geology test. It's going to be, uh, hard given you don't have, um, could I, you don't have I, the discs on like, like could I sell you, you could, alternatively, could I sell you archaeology? 
and uh, can I have like based on where like like you know I picked this up like can I have seen this is something that would have been broken off something larger? That's uh, no. This is this is right. it seems to be like a raw piece, but it's probably not archaeology for this one. That might get right. you other information. There is you could try no. archaeology in this region. Right. They were digging up. Um... I'll, I'll try. I'll try geology. Nah, no dice there. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are definitely similarities, it, but you cannot confirm anything. And it was different. It well, it was quite heavy though and cool to the touch. So, you but you're going off, you know. Vibe. Um, I'd like to as a if, if I have time before the day ends and I would be, we're going to be by the truck. I would love to make an archaeology check to try and figure out if this is something that like where I found it, if this indicates that the soil is diffused with it, or if it was, like, broken off something, if it was, like, like what is the origins of this? And particularly, you know, like, is this something that emerged from the soil over, you know, years, or could possibly have, you know, fallen from the stars or something? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's probably still more geology. Oh, well, I mean, really? I, I guess I and I, mean, I think I think you've already, you've already covered... It, I mean, you, you have a look. First of all, this this does this with your success. This appears to be a tiny fraction of like a. I mean, you've never heard of it before. It must be rare if it's naturally occurring. Uh, you'd need to do more tests. This would be like okay. kind of like pushing the roll, really. If, if if you continue down this, so if you can get it back to a, a lab or something, you can keep investigating it further. Sure. All right. Um, never mind. Never mind. Then I will. The, um. I will. Uh, actually, I do have some information under archaeology, though. So if you want to, if you want to do an archaeology roll again sure. on this specifically and, and where you where you found it. All right. Yeah. I'll give you six points of luck to succeed. Okay. Nice. Um, uh, given that you found it uh, in the near the river, uh, you think it may have been swept downstream from further up in the mountains. Ah, that is good to know. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, um, uh, uh, back in uh, Cobb's Corners, uh, Seb and Chaz, what are you guys doing? Uh, Seb, are you getting ready to head out to uh, the witch's house? I think um, Seb is trying to find Chaz because oh, no. that was the intention of um, getting Chaz to help with like the unloading of things. Cause That's true. All that time, so I'm going to go try and find Chaz. So you're heading back. Yep. Uh, Chaz? Um, still just having to think if it's, if it's taking, reasonable taking that Seb 10. would... If, if, reason, if it's reasonable Seb uh, would find me at, at the Gazette. The Gazette is across the road from the goods store. So oh, great. probably will in, in a moment. Um, uh, Seb, on your way back, can you give me a luck roll? To see Wendell screeching out of town. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Uh, you go through a, a past a lot of uh, unlit houses and, and people like re retreated. Um, you spot uh, as you go past uh, the doctor's office, um, the lights are on on the lower level, which is where he has his surgery. Okay. Um, but that's just you just notice it as, as you walk past. Um, if you continue heading up towards Kana's goods, uh, you will spot Chaz um, standing uh, under the eaves. Maybe just like, yeah, pacing or standing in the gazette. Dedrick, I've been looking for you. Oh, yeah? Well, you found me. Bravo. What are you... What are you doing at the gazette? Oh, well, you know, I... I cast my gaze around and make sure no one's watching us before I continue. Make a spot hidden roll. Seb oh, looks no. confused and does likewise, I think. Or like, probably just like, what's going on? Uh, uh, both of you make independent spot hidden rolls, actually. No. Alright, we're safe. Great. Um, do you want to come inside? I, I don't think Wendell will mind. He might not, but um, don't you think we should? Yeah, not yeah, be yeah. Here, we gotta be more subtle. The, we gotta know, be, gotta be lane. subtle. I would say you probably do step like it's just so loud outside. You kind of need to be like going inside to have a conversation, or like do you step into the goods store? Do you step into the diner? Um, you could retreat back into the the reporters. It's just conversations out in the rain are pretty hard to have. Somewhere we can't be heard. Um. 
All right. We can we can step back inside. I think he won't mind. All right. You go in. I'll the door was still like the... slightly ajar. You click it shut, and you can slide the lock across it. What's what's going on? Okay, so Wendell's scarpered, right? He's huh. gone. What? He ran. I tried to get him on side, try to find out what else he knew. I told him what I knew, and he just ran like a, like a yellow-bellied chicken. Yeah, I'm mixing metaphors here because I'm upset. What does he know? Uh, everything we know. And, uh, and, uh, oh, heck, I gotta catch you up. We, we found some more things in Blaine's room. Okay, um, where is he? Well, he's gone. He said he went to Brattleboro, uh, to get how, out. How long ago did he leave? Uh, yeah, it was moments, I guess. Ten minutes ago? Ten minutes? I don't know. Great. Uh, I, I couldn't would... stop him. He had a gun. You I... see, I would have stopped him. I would have locked him in the room, but he had a gun. He had a... All right. Do I know how people get in and out of this town? I'm assuming uh, by bus. Yeah, there's... Uh, well, or, or by personal car. Um, there is a bus service, but it's like it brings the mail in and it comes like weekly or possibly even monthly. Right. It is not, he, he'd have to have a car or something. Uh, and then from that, there are two bridges that, you, that cross over and then can get you out. Um, one which goes up near the mountains, which is up like the route that you guys normally take, and then another which is the quicker one um, back towards like a, a main road. I mean, he's insane, right? We knew that from the beginning. Like, he's unhinged and he's got a gun. So it's not really in our interest to try to stop him at this point. So anyway, I told him everything we know about uh, about uh, the deputy and, and how they might he might be working with Blaine or whatever, because Blaine and the deputy, they're, they're looking suspicious as heck. But not only that, see, Katie and I went to Blaine's room. We found uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, he's got a revolver. He's carrying a revolver somewhere around, because we found an empty revolver case. He's got right. books about witchcraft and occultism, which he's scribbled margins in. And he's got, uh, he had these these discs, like a, like a decoder ring, but in an alien language. Anyway, they were super fascinating. I showed him with Wendell. He grabbed him. He pulled the gun on me. He ran. Oh, and something's happened tonight. That's the other thing. We're on a ticking clock here. They had like a calendar, journal, some kind, planner. Follow with me. I will, I, will, I will just turn and start walking out the door. Where are you headed? Sheriff's. Are you following Chaz? Oh. Yep. Uh, do I know you? Uh, yeah, I, I it's just slow. You don't know I'm here. going to the sheriff. I'm just walking in the direction that will become apparent that I'm going to the sheriff's office. Yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. Just, uh, just slow down a second. I, I, I mean, I'll, yeah, we, we gotta talk about this. We got, we gotta think it out. You're not going to the sheriff's, are you? You guys get out into the rain. As soon as it catches you, you can't really talk anyway. So Chaz, you have to like jog a little bit to keep up with Seb. As you go past I, uh, Kana's Giant goods, funeral umbrella and striding in the rain. Um, as you go past the general goods store and head towards the sheriff's, which is just next to it, you notice that next to Kana's goods, there is a large truck, the sheriff's vehicle. Uh, the lights are off, but inside is the sheriff sitting there, looking out into the rain. And from here he would have an eye line on uh, the Gazette, as well as just the general street. He could see more from here than from the uh, the sheriff's office. Come um, on, McCarthy. Oh, come on, McCarthy. Odds are that the sheriff's in bed with the deputy as well. I mean, that's the, the most likely thing. We gotta, we gotta bust this wide open before we go to anyone. Chaz, I'm not planning to mention anything about what we know to the sheriff. Well, all right. A reporter drew a firearm on a student. Yeah. Y and I yeah. would like that person apprehended. Well, okay. But I wasn't scared of nothing. Just make sure that's obvious. I mean, he didn't spook me. Uh, you know, I had the situation kind of under control. Chaz, I, I wasn't shaking or anything. if you want your stuff back, if you want your notes, if you want your yeah. discs back, the yeah. quickest way to get that man back... Uh-oh. That's not a good sign. Is too... I don't need to be careful. I have money. Wow. I want that on a t-shirt or something. That's got to go on a plaque. That's, that's, Seb's, that's Seb's gravestone. That's Seb's epitaph right there. I yep. love that. I don't need to be careful. Dead. I have money. 
Afar. Um, so are you guys going to yep. the sheriff or are you going um, to the... I mean, you the... can't take it with you, so fuck it. Are you going to the sheriff? I'm going to the going sheriff. To the... If I see the sheriff in the car, I'm walking to the sheriff. Okay. All right. Uh, you head up in the rain. The sheriff's office. No, I'm Is going it... to... If I, if I the see outside. the sheriff in the car... Which means we have. Oh, no, this zoom is being very spotty. maybe experiencing some connection issues, but that's all right. Is that being spotty for you guys as well? Only just then, but okay. just for a moment. We'll yeah. see if yeah, it comes it, good. It did, it did it twice. Okay, well we'll we'll leave it for the moment and see if it sticks. Um, so uh, you... I'm going to the sheriff in the vehicle if I see him there. Hang on, actually, very briefly, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on the hold screen. Let's let's restart the zoom call because. Uh, it's you guys are being frame droppy. We'll be right back. back. All right, and we're back. Thank you for your patience. Um, so uh, the sheriff's vehicle is parked just nearby and, and, and has an eye line, uh, and the office is uh, off to the side and presumably has you know like their um uh, the actual employees that work there and things. Um, but you head up towards the car. Uh, as you get to it, you can see the sheriff is sitting in the uh, driver's seat. Uh, looking out on the whole area, and he sees Seb and Chaz approaching underneath the umbrella, um, and you sort of, like, rap on the window. Mm-hmm. The window... Uh, actually, he probably just kicks open... He pushes open the door a little bit, um, and with the rain heaving down, uh, the sheriff looks at the two of you and doesn't say anything. He just takes your measure. Sheriff? Uh, forgive me, did you see uh, Mr. Wendell leave in a, in a hurry? I did. Well, um, he just drew a firearm on uh, Mr. Dedrick here. How's so it going? I think I would like to report a crime, if I may. Follow me. He gets out of the car, kicks it shut, and heads towards the office. Very good. You both walk up in and uh, get out of the rain. Uh, on the interior, um, there's like a, a, an assistant or someone who, who helps like to document things. There's no sign of the deputy. Uh, and the sheriff walks over to stand behind his desk, puts his knuckles down and leans across it and looks at both of you. Um, uh, he waits for you to continue talking. I don't really have anything else to add to that so okay. I think I just say like I just met up with uh, Mr. Dedrick here and he informed me that Wendell decided to draw a firearm on him and uh, and left in a hurry that concerns me Sheriff why were you meeting with him he looks at Chaz uh, you know just uh, just shooting the shit, just chat, just chatting. He's he's interested in what we're doing. I don't know. Seems like a good idea. Wendell what are you doing? You know, with the the, the the very. We're just you know doing the rocks and doing the, the talking. You know, seems like nothing much happens around here. He just latches on. So I thought I'd amuse him. But uh, you know, obviously that was a dumb move because I didn't know he was carrying a gun around and pointing at anyone who just says something that upsets him. Seems you attract trouble. I don't got anything to say to that. That's probably advisable. I'll head after him. He won't have gotten far. Not in this weather. And his Doesn't car have a car? is a heap of shit. Oh, he does have a car. Okay. He does. You two aren't to leave town. None of the students are. I've had a word with Mr. Blaine. I understand what happened. Now I'm figuring out why it happened. This isn't over. And he heads off. Grabs Sheriff. his hat. What happened to um, Anne McLaren? He like stops. Uh, in the doorway and, and pauses. And he goes. A tragedy. Um, and he gets the hat and pushes it on 
And he goes, but that's not the McLaren you should be worried about. Uh, and then he heads out into the rain towards his truck. You can see the lights turn on and he swings out and begins to head towards um, uh, the main like road and the, and the, and the bridge out of town. Gonna... Well, that's just great. We weren't sure if the sheriff was inside the deputy, but if he wasn't, then he's out of town Dedrick. now. We just, we just sent away the only one who's got a gun big enough to help us here. I mean, what are you thinking? Um, there is one more employee, like a, a, an older woman who helps them with, to, like, organize things. So, like, you kind of have, I think oh. you, like, burst out and Sebastian goes, shh, <laughs> and oh, you step out outside. Someone um, else here. I'll say that yeah, as soon as we're out of shot. Yeah, I th I, that's just, I think that's just... Uh, making sure we're all on the same page with who's where. Uh, yeah, good. you guys step out, you go, and you go head outside uh, under the eaves, and you can keep talking. Dedrick. What? How good, how good are you at lying? Uh, well, I, I can get mad, I can get someone's face, that's much the same thing. Alright, well, next time someone asks you why you're talking to Wendell, maybe get mad about the fact that he slandered your name in the paper, because people might actually believe that didn't slander, did he? I don't know. I only skimmed it. He said enough to make implications about who you were. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you led him on that path or not. The yeah. point is that people will believe that you are annoyed that a reporter slandered your name. Especially yeah. one that is known to lie. That would have been a good story. Doesn't matter, my point still stands. You just sent the sheriff out of town on a wild goose chase. You just told me that Wendell has an artifact that yeah. was found in Blaine's room Yeah. that was written in a language no one understands. Yeah. Have you been to the Miskatonic University Museum before, Chaz? <laughs> Who are you asking here? I mean, come on. Those things are worth fortunes. Oh. So that man just robbed you of oh, an no. awful lot of money. After you robbed Well, him. he robbed Blaine, which is okay. Okay. Well, no, if Blaine we'll has it, it, there is a solid chance that he just robbed the Miskatonic University. Yeah, yeah, that's not a good look for him, is it? All right, so we got to get that back. We got to get that back. Mm -hmm. And we got to send the sheriff to get. Okay, all right, all right. Now we're now we're playing with the same deck of cards. You haven't had a lot of experience dealing with the press or the law, have you, Shaz? Sorry, let I me rephrase that, that. You've not had a lot of um, experience dealing with the press or the law on the side where you're not the one in trouble. Well, it sure sounds like that's why I have you around. You know, you, me, and Katie? Dream team, what can I say? Also, yes, we have politicians. Shall we? <laughs> uh, where are the two of you heading? Um, I'm gonna head back to Kana's general goods and be like, I know you said you weren't working today. Uh, you're not doing any work for the uh, geology. You're not doing any work for the expedition. Uh, but today, Chaz, uh, you can pay me back for all of that by working for me. How about that? Reasonable. Great. I'm gonna need you to lift some crates. Come on. Okay. And we'll head over. Uh, you both head into the nearby general store. Um, again, getting out of the rain, soaked to the bone. Um, there's no one in here currently, and you can find Fred Karna is in the back, already having kind of prepped for some of his things. Uh, he'll shake your hand, Chaz, um, and then set you both to task, uh, like loading up boxes into the back of his car. And then um, before he goes, he sort of um, says, you know, back soon to the wife, um, and uh, then gets to the car and if you're both ready to leave, we'll take you with it. Are you bringing the the recording thing? Yeah. So I would have requ I requested of I would have requested of Blaine, but like earlier in the day, to please like leave the phonograph at the general store so that yeah. I could go with it. Mm. Then, if that was possible. If not, I'll go and collect it from wherever it was. That's left. fine. General store makes the most sense. Uh, so you can get that and load it in. Um, in the car, there is a um, 
uh, like the passenger seat, and then uh, the back is quite uh, cramped. And um, Chaz like slides in there with the the phonograph which you're holding uh, to make sure it doesn't uh, get bumped around too much. Uh, and you begin to head out of town. Um, the drive out will take you. Uh, you actually go a different road. Oh no, that's not true. You actually will go up near um, the the path up towards the McLaren farmhouse and then branch. And in theory, also the road that uh, the sheriff and uh, the fleeing uh, reporter would have taken. Uh, on the way through, you're both keeping an eye out, but there's no immediate sign of either of them. And this car is just completely surrounded by rain. Uh, Fred is like hunched over the wheel, peering out uh, through through it, and you know clearly nervous about driving in these conditions. Every time the car sort of like slips a little bit or one of the tires doesn't grip, he swears under his breath and like slows down to it to a stop, waits for a moment, and then begins going again. It's fairly slow moving. Eventually, you turn off onto a uh, farm estate, and the high beams, barely through the rain, can pick up uh, the uh, a closed gate for like if they're keeping cattle or something inside. Um, and one of you is going to have to hop out, open it, let the truck through, and then close it behind before getting back in. Then that's what we do. All right, Chaz, you help out. Yeah. All right, you like put the things aside, kick it open and jump down. Uh, in the sheets of rain, you're able to move forward and like find the latch. You kick it open and drag it back through the mud and the truck drives through slowly before stopping on the other side. Uh, you move back and, and seal it shut. And as you do for a moment, you're sort of looking out over the road um, and which looks down, sorry, you're looking down towards where the road branches through this valley. Um, and for a moment, you think you might be able to see lights from cars or something in, in the distance, but <gasps> you're not sure. Those ain't lights from cars. What? Those ain't Pause. lights from cars. <laughs> Can't make anything out, and wherever they are, they, they, they continued on or went around a bend or something. You head back towards the truck, and when you get back in, just immediately drench the seat behind you and the car keeps driving up. Um, Do I have a chance of whispering to Seb without the uh, folks uh, in front of you? There, you'll have to, like, when you get there and get out, you can you can mention it. Yeah, yeah okay, all right, um, all right. So you pull up towards this little cottage, um, very, like, run down to the point where, like, the, you know, the walls kind of bow out a little bit and the, the roof looks like it leaks a little bit. There's a cute little veranda on the outside and a number, uh, a little herb garden uh, towards the back, as well as just a number of, like, potted plants hanging all throughout it. Um, as you get there, Fred begins to untie things, um, and uh, you can head up under the eaves, share a quiet word, and then knock to get him. I'm uh, gonna be like part way to knocking if you want to say. Hey, something. just uh, just a little heads up. You remember I told you about those lights on the way back from the dig yesterday? There's no, more. but I know now. Oh. No, I think I did, but uh, okay, you know now. Yeah, lights out in the forest. You know, when we come back from the dig, Harlow said there'd been stories he'd never seen them himself. Well, there's more. There's more okay. lights out there. Are you sure it's not just people on the road or? Oh, no. No, it's not that. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I would have thought that, you know, a week ago, but after what I've seen and what I've heard, no. There's some weird, spooky shit going on. Weird spooky shit is what the Miskatonic University is known for. Well, I just wanted to give you a heads up. You're welcome. Thank you, Dedrick. Shall we? Yeah. You knock on the door, and uh, there's no response from inside. Um, it's unlocked, though. Uh, the Connor's Fred is still here. Like yeah, he's, he's like getting around. he's getting things yeah. off. Uh, he'll he'll just yell. She probably can't hear you over the rain. Let yourself in. As long as that's all right, then I will open the door. Right, and, which is, what, and what's say, this witch's name again? Mrs. Bellwether. Yes, I will say, Mrs. Bellwether, we've come to deliver the groceries and perhaps talk to you about, um, witch lights. The door creaks open and you step in from the rain. Uh, the floorboard's underneath creak and you're standing in a small little, like, one room um, cottage. Off to the side there's a curtain which can be drawn around a bed and to the back there's a small kitchen. 
Uh, there's no immediate sign of anyone, but you can see a trap door slightly ajar in the ground. And when you step in and, and call out, there's no response, but something flashes past one of the windows on the outside. You only see it for a moment. The heck was that? Uh, go and check on Fred, please. Yeah, right, oh. You step back outside and Fred's still unloading things. He he's still unloading things. Grabs things and begins to move them up. And he's like now moving he's them up grabbing and placing things them on the veranda. Them up. <laughs> he's moving things up. He's placing them on the veranda. How would he have to? Um, what do you do? Oh. Uh, Mr. Connor, um, does Miss... Mrs. Bellwether store uh, her groceries in a in a like pantry in the basement. Is that where these usually go? Um, you you call out and he uh, uh, steps in for a moment underneath and and looks around and goes, yeah yeah um she's she's hard of hearing. Just head up, let her know you're here. Otherwise she'll get a fright when she comes up and sees you. Uh, he... with his essentially making sure he knows what we're doing in this house and we're not mm -hmm. just bumbling through some lady's effects. I'll open the trap door and stick my head through and see what okay. I see. Because you said um, this is a single room at the... Yeah, like it's there's not... like nowhere else really to yeah. go. Maybe there's like an attic secured away, but it, it's pretty small. Uh, yeah, you head over towards it and, and open up a trap door and beneath you can see some lights. Um, this is a storeroom. There's a number of like things hanging from like dried herbs and things hanging from the ceiling and uh, containers uh, for storing supplies. Um, Chaz, as Sebastian looks down, you once again see a flash of something moving past one of the windows and you're trying to track where it went. It's not Fred because he's standing just beneath, just behind you. Um, and Seb, uh, watching around, you see coming around the corner is uh, this tiny shrunken old woman with great big glasses and fair gray hair, which is sort of like loosely bundled up. She's wearing a, um, a white uh, dress and a pair of slippers with a, what looks like a, you know, a, a, a shawl or something uh, pulled around her shoulders. And as she gets to the stairs and you call down uh, to like, sorry, like a ladder and you call down to her, she doesn't seem to notice still. And she just get, puts like one hand on the ladder and one foot on it. And very cautiously pulls herself up next one pulls us out and she's just beginning to ascend in that um, case i will take a few steps back so that when like i want her to when she looks up realize there's someone there without being close enough to spook the poor dude yeah yeah, yeah. Chaz okay. is like found the spot in his room where he can keep the most windows in his vision <laughs> at once <laughs> the roof <laughs> i feel like at this point seb is honestly after everything that Chaz has just ranted about, is like you know what, let him have his fun. I I don't know what I don't know what his problem is, but whatever. Like he can. Um, uh, Chaz, do you want to give me a spot in roll? Oh no. Yes. Uh, you go. There's just a wall of failed spot hiddens beginning to gather on the side of the screen. Ooh. Oh hey. Oh yeah. It's oy, about oy. time. Is the stream gonna get me a little something special? Uh, there's another. There's another. Uh, don't, 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 sorry, such a match. Uh, there's another flash of something and, and you move over to inspect it as uh, the woman comes up and, and spots you. Uh, she doesn't seem to, to start to, she just looks up and, and you can see her peering through her glasses and she's clearly close to blind and probably pretty close to deaf as well. And then she looks out and goes, visitors, ooh, how nice. <laughs> and then like walks over towards you. Um, as Chaz, you finally uh, catch what's moving out there. You move over it and standing at the window, pawing to be let in, is a black cat. Wow. <sighs> Witch. <laughs> well, all right. I open the window. It does a little spin, sits for a moment, then hops down into the ground and begins to wind through your legs. And you can, okay. wind, and you can close it again against the rain. This is clearly not an ordinary cat, because an ordinary cat, you would open the window and it would just sit there and look at you and then turn around and walk away. Pause for a moment. It, it let you know that it was choosing to and made sure you knew who was in charge. Um, Fred <sighs> comes in and takes a look at the place and spots a, like, leak towards the back where water's beginning to go in. And he goes, oh, come on, Agnes, you got to look after this sort of thing. I'm going to patch that up. Uh, Y'all do what you need to do interview-wise and let's try and get on the road in 10 or 15 okay i want to i want to get back to christine as soon as possible and he heads right. over and begins like get a little ladder out and head up and begin patching it after moving all the things in 
Um, the two of you uh, sit down across from Agnes, um, who draws the shawl around and sits in this like large, comfortable uh, chair. Uh, the cat immediately hops up onto her lap, spins around, and, and starts purring contentedly. Uh, and the two of you are parked on like just improvised stools you've brought over and a small side table which you've balanced uh, the phonograph on and are ready to begin it. She seems to not fully understand who you are or why you're here. Um, so as you're like beginning to get things set up, she leans over and goes, And who are you again? My name is Sebastian McCarthy. I'm a student at the Miskatonic University over in Arkham. We're here to gather uh, folklore and history of Cobb's Corners. You may remember there was a group of us who came last year. Speaking yes. at an elevated volume and slowly-ish. Yes, so they did. Hmm. None came to visit them, so it's nice you've made the trip. We were uh, informed, Mrs. Bellwether, that you were one of the best people to speak to about folklore and history of the town. We couldn't possibly not have made the trip. Yes, well, live long enough, gather a few stories, hmm? Would you be so kind as to share them with us? Oh! On this rainy, dark and rainy day. Yes, it's appropriate, I think. Very appropriate. Uh, and outside, thunder rolls, and there's a crash of lightning. Um, you both sit and, and talk to her a little bit. Um, she fills you in on, like, some of the just, like, rambling stories, things of, you know, um, stories about, you know, people who supposedly went out into the woods and, and you know, saw great black dogs and things. Stuff a lot that, I mean, you guys have done folklore stuff that do line up with other tales from the, the area. Um, but the one that's most relevant is about uh, the original settlers that came mm -hmm. to this valley. And she um, begins to launch into it with the practiced ease of a very good storyteller. She like takes these like dramatic beats and everything and she's she's really also kind of just like hamming it up and just loving talking to people uh she goes when um franklin cobb it's the man who settled the area and the original folk came to this valley they were they were halted by a group of american indians uh, the abenakis uh, they warned franklin and told him that this was cursed land and that uh Long ago, another tribe settled here and were, were wiped out, evil spirits, in one single night. According to their legends, the tribe died in most hideous ways, frozen, burned, ripped apart. The remains of those massacred were found and buried at the foot of a hill in the valley. But on the evening they were buried, evil spirits took to the air, screaming curses and threats, and it was only the Indians' wise men and their powerful magic that were able to keep the spirits at bay while his tribe made their escape. They never came back. Cobb wasn't one to listen, and so they settled the region. Now, I think there's some truth to this. I don't know if you've noticed, but... There's very few natural creatures in this valley. There's no bugs, no bees, no mosquitoes. Birds don't fly overhead when they head south for the winter. The only things living in this valley are man and the things that man brings. Did you know that when they first moved here, they couldn't grow anything? But now they don't even need to worry about weeds. On the crops, at least. Things just pour out of the ground where it isn't appropriate to do so. If we couldn't sell it all off to the cities, we'd be drowning in crops and cows. And all this from thin, rocky soil. Every so often, I wonder why we were given this bounty. And more importantly, I wonder what we're paying for it. And she sits back. Taking the measure, both of you. 
I hear blood and bone are very good fertilizers. Hmm. This... It's true. People are desperate when they're hungry. Do all sorts of barbaric things. Especially in the old days. Hmm. What did they do in the old days? Well... They struggled. You understand, when you're hungry, you'll do most anything. So they would go out and parade to absent gods and beg the hills to provide them with what they needed. Seems eventually something listened. Again, that's what I think. And, uh... As far as paying for it goes, d did you know that uh, some folks think people tend to die in Cobb's Corners a little bit earlier than they should? I've, I've, I've noticed it. Um, she seems to uh, sober up a bit. Oh, no, that's not the right word. Uh, she seems to get more severe uh, with this, or, or more serious at least. This is less like fun story now uh, about like distant uh, rituals and more like relevant and she goes I've, I've I've noticed it I'm sure I was um medicus to the town for, for some years before Dr. Perry arrived and in that time I I saw a lot of death yeah, it's it's hard I believe farming life but um the more I tried to look into it the more questions I tried to ask the more I was shunned pushed out of the circle and eventually people just wouldn't come to me for help when they needed it. So I learned to let some things lie. I helped those that I could and I just tried to to help ease passing. If you understand my, my drift. Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Bellwether, um, this trip is ostensibly an expedition being paid for by an oil and gas company for reasons I do not entirely understand, but it is a little personal as well. Some of the students last time went missing. I heard terrible. You are familiar with the old stories of what is the history of Cobb's Corners, so then I have grown up on folklore and fairy tales, so please believe me when I say nothing you could tell us is going to come as a, a shock or a horror. Perhaps not. Why do you think they didn't come back? I don't have simple or clean answers for you, I'm afraid. Everything's cloaked in story, and stories change. But there's a lesson to be learned. We have been given a bounty, and clearly we pay a cost. Besides that, it is a good place and a good life. People don't pry. They don't push. I learned after time that if I tried to investigate too closely, I'd be shunned or ostracized. I suspect you're missing friends, and it's so unfortunate that they are gone. They pushed, they pried, and something caught wind. Best to let sleeping dogs lie, eh? Yes. Best to let things lie. I think... I think that's, um, everything we came to ask, if...
No, I think that's everything we came to ask. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm sorry you don't get more visitors. You are a incredible storyteller. Ah, well, it is a practice. Um, she leans forward and the cat kind of like scoots over to the side and, and, and sits beside her now. She's a small woman in a, in a large chair. Uh, and she reaches across and takes both of your hands in her old, like, withered, um, uh, her own withered hands. Um, and she says, I hope, I, I pray you will, you'll be all right. You'll, you'll be fine. This, this place is good to us. But it's always the outside, the new folk that that never seem to quite acclimatize. Drive, drive safely, and um, don't linger. And she settles back. Um, Kana finishes the the patching. And looking out at the weather, he goes, This isn't getting any lighter, but uh, I'd say we'd best head off. Try and make it back into town. Of course, we wouldn't want to keep you from your uh, wonderful wife longer than necessary. No, and um, your, uh, your, other, your other team should be heading back not too long as well. So we'll be able to meet up with them. Um, and he heads out to the car, and you can gather up your final things. Uh, unless there's anything further you'd like to do. Enjoy your groceries, ma'am. She nods to you, and then begins to like s settle about going through things and just seeing what she's got. Little goodies. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Seb is particularly quiet. Okay. Um, you get back into the car and begin to make your way back. Uh, meanwhile, up the mountain, everyone's gathered again. You've done these, these rough tests, Katie. And um, the storm's gotten so bad. You guys are completely exhausted. You're soaked through to the bone. You're tired. You're muddy. And all anyone can think about is counting down the minutes until Harlow and Blaine get back. That time comes and goes. Oh, and it doesn't seem like anyone's coming. No! Block looks around at everything and he goes... If we get left here overnight, it's gonna be bad. Real bad. Higgins pipes up and goes, Right, well, the bus isn't far. I reckon we should head down there, right? And we'll flag someone down, or hell, we can camp in that if we need to. Fucking Blaine. Fuck. Uh, even Clarissa's looking around and, and beginning to like, like, gather up the most important things. But you also have crates of things that cannot be carried down the mountain. Um, they'd have to just be abandoned. Block looks at Alvin and goes, I mean, we, we leave this here, it's going to get lost, but I don't see a damn alternative. Are we Katie? close enough to the uh, little cave on the other side of the river that if we could somehow get across, we could move things in there and take shelter? You'd be having to take, like, full crates across a flooded river. It's, it's possible. It's very risky crossing yeah. that river at the moment, I, though. I'll make sure we take the special mineral that we found. But apart from that, I guess... So you get in, like, a vial and you, and you pocket yeah. it in? Okay. <laughs> um, you, like, grab that and you grab a couple of, like, uh, general pieces um, and then begin to try to, to, to find the path heading down. Your hair's sticking to your face. Um, Clarissa's stumbling a little bit in, in, the, in the mud and everything. And uh, Block keeps his, his head on a swivel, just constantly looking around uh, into the dark uh, and trying to spot the path on the way uh, down. Um, as you, what, how do you make the descent? How's Katie acting and feeling? Um, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm cautious. I think that I am worried that, you know, we had a lot of things set up to make sure that what happened didn't happen. So, you know, I, I'm thinking that ideally, uh, you know, I mean, sorry, worst case scenario, not ideally. Um, you know, Blaine is actively playing disruption. You know, he might have organized to make sure that we don't get help. So I'm kind of 
reverting to church mouse status, kind of being at the back trying to not be spotted. I think that um, uh, I'll, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm ready to kind of dart off into the dark and try and hide if need be. Okay. Abandoning the others? Well, we'll see how far it gets. Jeez. Okay. Uh, you can make you make the descent. Occasionally, you pull out the the small compass which was provided to you, and it's able to kind of like write you more or less and find the way down. You're using the torch to to pick up the the path through the mud. Several times, you you slip and slide down through it, and by the time you're getting closer to it, um, you're like bruised and and scratched and 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 exhausted. Um, finally, um, Higgins calls out from a little bit further up ahead. He goes, "I, I think it's here somewhere. It's it's got to be close." Uh, yelling over the rain, uh, and that's when you spot uh, a flash of light from further up the mountains through the woods. What do you do? Um, is it close or? Could you make a spot hidden roll? A success. Okay. Um, uh, no, it's not particularly close, uh, or it's small. It's a little hard to tell, and everything's like through um, a heavy. Uh, rain, but it seems to be a little ways away. Um, you don't see it for a while, but then because you succeeded, you spot another one, and that one is closer. It's somewhere to the right, through the trees. It's a little bigger. You think whatever they are, they're they're getting closer. Whatever uh, that is. I'm gonna hurry us towards the um. Hurry us towards the uh, the the truck, the the bus, or hopefully where the bus is. You slide through the the mud and eventually get towards the bus. Um, it's locked from the inside, uh, but Block gets his his shoulder into the side of it and jams against it, and is able to begin to force the door open as Clarissa stands in the rain, looking around, and and Higgins um, paces. Uh, eventually, it busts open, and everyone piles a uh, uh, jam. Uh, sorry, sprints onto it. Um, out of the rain, and you're left standing in the door for just a moment. Uh, as you're standing there, you can spot there are tracks in the mud where uh, Harlow's truck stopped on the way back down, um, just over there, but they're beginning to be, like, pelted by rain. Um, immediately uh, sitting in, everyone begins to, like, look out around through the the uh, the rain and trying to spot the returning truck. I, I am going to... Um, uh... I'm going to say to them, listen, look, look. Uh, I don't, I, I, I think well, we, we, we can waste all, all, all our time looking out. I think it's better that we, you know, try and keep warm and settle in. Um, and I would like to start drawing shut curtains. I don't want those lights shining uh, in. There aren't any curtains on the bus. Ah, it's it's no all open on the bus. windows. Okay. Never mind then. All right. Let them, let them watch. Okay. Um, uh, can I have a quick look at the tracks and see if I reckon? Um, actually, no, they were they were left when Hallow's car stopped, so that'll be an approximate time for them. Um, um, you can make it. Do you, do you have track? I have archaeology, but not track. No, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, not really. You could you could you could head out and just have a look at them, but otherwise, from here, it's pretty hard to see. I'll make a quick track check just because. Okay, so you um, do head out into the rain to to have a look for them at them. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Okay, make a track roll. No dice. You get, like, out into there and your feet sink into the mud. You're pretty certain that this was made not when it stopped. It's, it's in a different place. So they went up the hill, came back, and stopped here for a moment. But there's not much else you can see. And you quickly head back onto the uh, the bus and, and rejoin the others. From their block saying, God damn it. Lane screwed us again and now we're going to be stuck up here. There's no sign of Harlow and I don't want to spend the night up here. I mean, this thing's a rickety-ass bus. If something breaks through one of these windows, we're going to be soaked to death. And hell, if it starts slipping through the mud, who knows where we'll end up. Uh, Higgins uh, takes a measure and he goes, Wait, well, I mean, given my family ties, I can probably try and get the bus moving. And he heads over to sit in the driver's seat and he kicks under it and begins trying to manually start it without a set of keys. Uh, Clarissa's at the back and she's gotten out some of her books and things and she's going over notes. It seems to be partly like a nervous habit, also partly trying to get as much information about the mineral just to try and get uh, some information recorded. What are you doing? 
Um, I will. I, I don't think I can provide any useful help here to to um, uh, anybody. I, I think I, I will do the same as Clarissa. I will sit down and start going over my own notes, but specifically, I'll be going over the books that were given to me by um, well, so that were taken. Yep. Uh, so from, you're like from Blaine. sit at the back and unfold the books, begin to go through some of them. From the front, you can hear the occasional uh, swearing from Harry, who's not having a ton of luck blocks pacing up and down and Clarissa looks up and goes, could you stop that? Uh, and he like goes, sorry. Yeah, sorry. And then after a moment or two, resumes again and you continue trying to flip through the book. Outside, when you look over, you notice the weather has changed a little bit and there's now fog, like mist beginning to gather on the ground outside and Block looking out goes, can't see a damn thing in here. And then you see a light go past not right directly at the windows but somewhere out there about where the tree line is you imagine from the front Harry goes damn it I can do this I don't know why it's not working I reckon someone's fucked with it I should be able to get this started someone's fucked with it and Block goes god damn it I'm... I can... can anyone look at the engine I can I can have a look but I I got nothing where did this goddamn fog come from? And Clarissa stands up and, and begins to look out the window. She goes, did, did anyone just see that? There's um, something out there. I am going to um, slide. I, I know it's the light that she's referring to. I'm going to slide out my torch uh, and turn it on um, and point it out the window, not towards where I think that light was and say, sorry, that was me. And I'm going to try and run interference. I'm going to try and keep them in the fricking bus and any light. It was just me with the torch. Sorry, my bad. Okay. Do you want to make a fast talk check? Absolutely. Uh, not, not a success, not a fumble. No, not a success. But very close. Um, you, you like shine it out and, uh, Clarissa goes, well, can you not do that then? I swear I saw something. Higgins from the front goes, uh, is, is talking to Block, who gets up there and Block goes, I, I, I can try and take a look at the engine, stay here, pump the gas, be ready to try and get it started. Don't go out by yourself. If we're, I'll, I'll come out with you and I'll take the torch to cover uh, him. You get, you get to the door and he's about to go and goes, stay inside, Katie. You, you can... At least pump the clutch, right? Higgins, you come with me. And Higgins goes, I don't want to go. Send her. You shouldn't go out by yourself, and you'll need someone to hold the torch. Yes. All right, well, let's go. Um, you both head out, and you are in, like, thick fog. You can barely see anything. Uh, from inside, you can spot Higgins, who's like uh, uh, like just jamming on the on the clutch and trying to get it started repeatedly. As Clarissa uh, in the back looks around uh, nervously, um, you get to the uh, the engine, and as uh, Block gets up the lid of it and, and props it open, you look down, and you can see it's clearly been sabotaged. There's a, like a line or something that's just been cut. Uh, do you have any skill with mechanical or electrical repair? Uh, no, I can take a Hail Mary, but, um, it's going to be a Hail Mary. Um, what I would like to do, though, is I'd like to, I'll call out to the others to get them out, and I want someone to use the camera to photograph this, just so there's some evidence. Oh, photograph what? The, oh, the, set, the sabotage. Setting up the camera is going to be like a 15, oh, yeah, 20 minute yeah. process, and in these conditions, the camera will just be uh, destroyed. Right. I mean, look, it's, it's going to be a Hail Mary mechanical repair then, um, uh... Yeah, can I take? It. Yep. Roll can I take advantage with the, with uh, blocks assistance? Yes. Yeah, you can roll with the bonus. Right. Here we go. Oh, Thirty-one and uh, one point of luck for a success. Whoa. Yep. Very nice. There we go. You get in sometimes, there. And sometimes the dice. You spend one point of luck. You begin to like jam, like like hook the line back together, and you're able to like get it enough that it's kind of functioning. For a second, it rumbles a bit and then dies again. Uh, then block helps you. It's clear that whatever the sabotage done was like lowest common denominator. They just cut one thing and we're like, well, that'll do it. Uh, it's not a complete wreck job. Um, eventually, you're 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 pushing it. Uh, and sorry, not pushing the roll. Uh, and you get it in, and the engine uh, stirs into life just as something moves right behind you. And for a moment, you see something shifting through the dark. It's 
big and it's wide and you can see something flash and I need you to make a sanity roll. Success. Okay. No penalty. You whirl around and then head. are you heading back into the bus as quick as possible? Yep, back in. Um, okay. Dragging, dragging uh, uh, Block with me. Okay. Uh, you head back into the bus and uh, get up the stairs. Block gets in to um, step onto the lower step when suddenly he stops. And he reaches out and he grabs the inside and something has wrapped around his torso and suddenly he's wrenched backwards into the fog. Do you do anything? Yeah, can, can you I try and catch him? Yeah, make a, uh, make a fighting brawl check, I think, to try um, and just grab him in time. And it's basically you're, you're grappling him. Uh, could I, could I, uh, yeah, fight, I guess it is fighting brawl. All right. Uh, um, I really want to save block. I will, I will luck this. Okay. It's going to be a contest. So that's not, it's not a guarantee. Oh, it will be a contest, won't it? Okay. Um, uh, do, ha, has block rolled effectively? Has this overwhelmed block stats? Okay. Um, well, you don't know what's, this is just him being wrenched back into the fog. You don't know what's going to happen after that. I'll lock Block's it. A Block's a yeah. football star. He's got plenty of strengths. Yeah. If he can I, help. I okay. will. I will. I will try. I will. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll lock it. And if I can, if I can even just give advantage to block, I think it's worth it. All right. Spending a bunch of luck. Oh god, okay. that's. A I've lot. made my roll. Yep. Block so it's is. A, I mean, let me just. You got a regular get, success, right? Let me just get the maths. Uh, it will be twenty-five minus three. Twenty-two points. Twenty-two points of luck. Thank Sheesh. you. Uh, Ouch. Block is wrenched backwards. You are able to like jump out, catch him in time, and whatever it is on it slips. He leans backwards and kicks something on the other side as he yells, Hagen, start the damn truck! He boots it. You both tumble back into the bus and uh, the whole thing begins to swing around. Clarissa from the back screams and goes, there's something out there! Uh, as something shifts past the windows suddenly and uh, windows begin breaking at the back and something latches onto her and she tries to get pulled backwards uh, from the from the rear. Uh, Katie, what do you do? Um, uh, ha ha so if the Block's The door is still like, yeah, but the door's like half open and Block's just lying on the ground. Higgins is trying to pilot. It's got the big uh, bus wheel that goes like this way and he's like trying to swing it around to get it moving. And Clarissa, who is all the way at the back, screams as the back window is burst open and something lashes around her and tugs her back out into the fog or tries to okay um i i get blocks free and has a better chance so i'm gonna rush to try and help clarissa now and and i'm gonna yell get the cast out of block get in okay uh do you want to make it do you wanna make another fighting brawl roll yeah absolutely oh god all right here we go Okay, this one, you go sprinting for I mean, you're trying your best to save these people, but Clarissa from the back is just grabbed and pulled bodily out into the fog. Gone, immediately. And as the car starts, it begins to turn around and there's no sign of her anywhere out there. But you can still see lights moving, large things flitting uh, through the darkness. Um, and the, the truck begins to swing around and head down. Block runs towards you, like getting himself back up and sprinting back, and he yells out for Clarissa as you turn away. But Higgins doesn't stop, and he begins to descend down the mountain. Is Block is Block um in the triple yes. bus? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. If the three of us are in the bus, I don't think we can stop for Clarissa. We're heading down the mountain. Okay. All right. You begin to to oh, wrench round no. and make the descent. It's slippery, and the whole thing's sliding back and forth. You're hitting, you're clipping trees, but eventually you break out of the fog and it's just the heaving rain from here uh higgins is a competent driver uh, at best um and in these conditions it's mostly luck that's traveling you down and uh the good thing is you are up so eventually you know even sliding you will go down and the whole thing begins to drag inside clipping into trees and things but you have outpaced the fog and whatever's out there moving you can only occasionally see flashes of lights in the distance but you see no that pace them for now, at least. As you sit in the back, rain pouring in through the broken windows, the door busted, Block looking uh, terrified, and Higgins trying to keep some control, seven Chaz begin to make their way in their own car back towards Cobb's Corners, and we're going to park the session there. May I say a final thing? Yeah. I'd love a final moment as, we, as we're driving down. Uh, I, will, I will yell out to the, to the remaining survivors with me, uh, Guy, yeah, it, it the paper was right. Blaine killed those people. Now he's killed Clarissa. 
And if we don't get him, he's gonna kill us. Hell yes. Uh, Seb also has something going through his head. Yep. Me. Yeah, yeah, hit me. Everything that we've been told, everything that we're like learning, and I would like I don't I don't know. This is like very meta. Wherever Katie has stashed that little bit of something interesting in her pocket, don't take what you can't pay for. Ooh, yeah. Mm. Very interesting. Rock and roll. That's that's said the thought. Said the thought. Okay. So, um, where we're parking this session, it is the afternoon of the day. Everyone is trying to get back into town. We're like three days into this. Two the days. Sheriff, the sheriff has been sent away chasing the reporter. Uh, there's no sign of Blaine and who knows where Harlow went. Uh, the group is split up and just getting back into town in this kind of rain is going to be difficult. And then once you're there, you have to figure out what it is that's going on. So we'll have to find out next session. Good shit, gang. Thanks, Dave. What's going through Chaz's head is... Oh, yes. Nothing. Head <laughs> <laughs> empty. As usual, head empty. You're still you just know, thinking, well, that's good it was a cat. <laughs> we're probably you know, on the on, on the plus side, we all we all miss Clarissa very dearly as she, I don't know, gets eaten by strange lights. Oh, uh, this now is Now the only other person not. who who could have had any claim to having discovered Katie Minium as being <laughs> eaten. So uh, I've got my Nobel Prize on the horizon. Oh, you had better believe when Seb finds out about this, someone is getting hospitalized. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll park it there. Thank you, everyone, for playing. Thank you all so much for watching. We will be back next week, same time, same place, to continue this story. See you then. Ciao.